Tracy Stair mentioned about ISDS and about the effect on public services. I want to just say one or two things about public services, particularly about health and education, and what MTTIP could mean for those if it, if it goes ahead in its current form. It could stop governments from bringing back into public ownership public services that have been privatised. It could open up um, public services to, the, um, to private corporations, US corporations, to do that. It could prevent a future UK government from um, repealing the Health and Social Care Act. And huge implications there for how we deliver public services. Lord Mayor, what the Labour Group wants to achieve from this motion um, tonight is to send out a very clear message to the UK government. Yes, we want trade. Yes, we want the jobs and the growth and the investment. Yes, we want um, the, the private, um, private services to be able to trade with each other between the, the EU and the US. But we also want to protect public services because public services should be public and should remain public services. That's the message that we want to send out. Jobs and growth, yes, but public services to remain public services. So we're now voting on the amendments as moved by Councillor Jennings. All those in favour? All those against? Young people in the report was really important. 
they're dependent on us, people who can make changes, can make decisions to act quickly. So they have the chance of growing up and raising their own children in a planet with a stable climate, a clean air and a functioning 21st century infrastructure. So now the report's out and it's uh, laid out a number of recommendations for the council to follow and I hope we will adopt those. We can't just sit back and con congratulate ourselves for producing the document. It's up to us to be proactive now and look at what we can do to start changing things quickly. Highways is an area that we identified in our motion where we do have a certain amount of control and it can have a big impact. The plans that have been emerging recently from highways do have an encouraging focus on walking and cycling and I hope this aspect of highways can be really promoted and pushed forward um, quickly. But if the city is to have a sustainable transport infrastructure, we can't have more measures which favour car drivers, such as the scrapping of bus lanes. And another area where there's a mixed picture is with promoting cycling in the city. The introduction of the city by car scheme has been really successful, great choice of colour as well. Yet this administration is refusing to adopt best, tra uh, best practice on slowing traffic down. Slower, slower traffic is one of the single best things you can do to make cyclists more safe. Yet, even though Liverpool has much higher speeds than other cities such as Manchester, uh, this council refuses to consider implementing 20 miles per hour speed limits in any main roads. It could make a huge difference for cyclists. And then an area where the, the council are going backwards as quickly as possible is on green spaces. These are vital assets. Our, our, you know, our treasured green spaces should be protected and preserved for future generations. They're an essential part of the, uh, the city's environmental infrastructure. There's, a, there's talk of green corridors in the report, so we need to maintain those. And also the report talks a lot about the importance of quality of place. And um, I think that's a really key part of the report. If we do start eroding our much better green space, we will erode our quality of place and that will harm the report in the long run. Um, so we have the report which can act as a guide for getting the city moving towards becoming truly sustainable. And we have some signs that the council are starting to understand the way forward and we are starting to do things in a better way. Um, but this motion, motion identifies further things that we need to do to, if we're going to take the urgent steps needed to achieve sustainability. And I hope the council adopts it. Right, so I've got two people who've indicated that they would like to speak to the motion. So I Looking confused, Councilman B. Are you expecting us to? Yes, I've got Councilor Bowman and Councilor Noakes who wish to speak to the main motion. So, oh, no, Jay. All right, okay. I'll tell you what we'll do. We will do what we normally do then. We'll take the amendment now. Okay, so we move the amendment, Councilor Mumby. Thank, thank you, my Lord Mayor. Can I begin by striking fear in your heart? and those of the officers by saying that I'll be brief. Horror into the heart of the Mayor by saying I'm going to be helpful to the opposition here. Can I begin by congratulating uh, Tom Crow on becoming the new leader of the Greens. Um, I tell you I'm going to be helpful. I'm going to explain to your opposition. I have 12 years of it. The amendment that I put constructs the motion that the opposition should have put. Your job as the opposition is to hold our feet to the fire to say, this is what you say you're going to do, what are you going to do to do it? And it sets out a very clear way to do it, you know, off the Mayor and um, Cabinet members, and I, Council Notes has asked me to add in, which I hope will be accepted, and Mayor will need to bring forward proposals on the implementation. So it gives you a chance, it gives everybody a chance to look at, are we serious? Do we put our money where our mouth is? And to hold us to account on delivery. It doesn't do what your motion does, which I just think is bad politics and bad policy. Throw in a few of the other points that you want to do. That's not a good way of doing policy. Um, we've had a commission which you say you support, and you're suddenly trying to sort of add in a whole number of points. Um, now, I'm comfortable about doing that because I'm proud of this administration's record. And I, I was glad you mentioned green spaces because um, whenever I'm hearing the Green Party talk about it, the environment, the green spaces and recycling, they always make me think of St. Saint Augustine, who may be saying, you know, God made the chase, but not yet. And it's a bit like that, because the Greens believe in allotment, just not there. They believed in recycling, but not if it made their then leader bad, which is why they wouldn't support the move to manage weekly collections. 
And I was really pleased, Tom, and I mean this, that you said you would commit to community gardens. Great, because that will be a first for green councillors in this city, because it's Labour councillors under my leadership that have delivered community gardens. And you shouldn't have a problem with that. You know, you should be embracing recycling, but I'd rather have a competition in practice, not in rhetoric. So what this does is simply says, quite sensibly, this is a commission, we welcome it, and what are you going to do about it? It says to us as cabinet members, I'm proud to just that challenge, but I think the opposition's job, as I said, is to hold our feet to the fire, not to posture. Okay. So we're now speaking to the amendments. Councillor <coughs> Beaumont, do you want to speak to the amendments? Yes. 